Iran limits condom usage. On November 16th, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi signed into law the, quote, rejuvenation of the population and support of the family bill, which sparked a backlash from human rights watchdogs, NGOs for women's rights, and HIV and AIDS prevention advocacy groups. The bill, which is due to be enacted within a few weeks, will prohibit sterilization and the distribution of free contraceptives in Iran's public health care system. The only outlined exception is when a pregnancy will threaten a woman's life. According to uh, Tara uh, Sepirfri Far, senior Iran researcher for the Human Rights Watch, Iran's legislators are ignoring the severe problems of incompetence, corruption, and repression that obliterated the nation's economy and therefore motivates couples to have fewer or entirely forgo having children. Instead, they approved a law that, quote, blatantly undermines the rights, dignity, and health of half of the country's population. Uh, Far added that the Iranian government is, quote, denying them access to essential reproductive care and information. The law will likely make more individuals, quote, highly vulnerable to HIV and lead to an increase in cases of HIV infection in the country. They literally care, but these are like, just like other right-leaning people, they care about birth rate more than anything else, right? They Well, more than many other things, right? They like, they drink, just want to keep increasing the population. Uh, so much so that they want to cr- increase the size of the Ummah, the Muslim community so much, that if it comes at the expense of spreading disease among their among their citizens, this is a government that is like, if our measures, like, think about this. Other countries that are dealing with, like, low birth rates, they like incentivizing people. They're like, maybe, like, we will pay you if you have babies. Maybe we'll do this for you. We will have child care. We'll do this. We'll make it easy for you. Please, please, please go have sex. Have sex. Like, what do we have to do, right? And some more mature countries were like, we don't need to do anything. We're just, like, bringing immigrants. That's all you need to do, right? Um, but, yeah, that would be the best answer. Based. But, again, yeah. But but these these, these people, they're like, we were going to go with the cheapest way possible. And we care so little for our citizens that we will use methods that will actually spread diseases among our citizens because we don't give a crap about our people. Like, think about that. Think about that. We don't give a crap about it. Like, like they know th- this is, they know, like, this is, this is not something that is foreign to them. Like, they're not, they, this is used for reducing sexual diseases spreading. They know that, and they know by removing this option, the uh, sexual diseases, um, you know, will increase. Like, they, this is not something that is foreign to them. They know that, but they're they're willing to pay the cost because they're not the ones who are going to pay the cost. It's the people. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's how, how really... Did... Go on. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I want to ask you something after you make your point. Yeah, I think it's really interesting because, um, I mean, it could be argued, and I actually think that this isn't necessarily a um, religiously motivated um, thing. Like, the issues with Iran's birth rate has been going on for a long time. I learned today that in the 80s, mid-80s, Iran had a birth rate of 6.1 children per woman. And now it's the lowest in the Middle East. And... um, trying to force people to have children like over and over and over again it just it just doesn't work you can incentivize it the bill also included other things like um uh like tax credits and stuff like that and many countries try to implement these things as well and it just it it's not enough to motivate people to have more children especially in mm. the the shape that the Iranian economy is in right now. And I wanted to cover this news because a few weeks ago we talked about how um, there were rumblings that there is the possibility of um, women's pregnancies being tracked. So like you go into the doctor to just get a pregnancy test or maybe you go into the doctor and while they're doing other tests, you just happen to find out that you're pregnant. Well, there were rumblings that these are now going to be tracked so that they can then find women who are having illegal abortions. 
because there's very tight restrictions on abortions in Iran right now. And now it's clamping down even further. They're not even allowing the use distribution of free contraceptives anymore. Some hardline, um, some hardliners, conservative hardliners are trying to say that family planning is like a Western invention, that family planning is um, like un-Islamic or that it's, it's like outside foreign influence, which I think is insane. Partly because when I grew up as a Catholic, like the idea of natural family planning was so heavily promoted as an alternative to birth control that having family planning painted as like some sort of anti-religious thing just doesn't compute in my brain but that's my own upbringing um armin it looks like you had something you wanted to show well i wanted to mention a, a few uh, okay let, let me show you the graph first this was the birth rate fertility rate in iran right uh one thing i want to mention about fertility rates in iran is that uh, fertility rates usually drops this much when a country pro um, has a lot of progress, right? Iran is getting the worst of both worlds, right? So usually when a country is a lot more economically developed and keeps progressing and people make more money and there's a lot of career opportunities for women uh, and people are making better plans for the future because there's so much, there's so much hope for what th things could be, um, fertility rates drop, okay? That's a problem that advanced countries deal with. Countries that have made, that have solved a lot of the, uh, their problems. They have to deal, like, and fer fertility rates dropping is a problem that they have to deal with. But obviously, we, it's a worthy problem. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good problem to have because if you have that problem, that means so many other things are going good for your country, right? Unfortunately for Iran, they're having this problem of dropped fertility rates without actually having the progress that is responsible for it. Do you know what I mean? In other countries. Like, so you're getting you're getting screwed from all directions. Like, so that's, you know. And also look at this. The fertility rate in Iran has dropped, like as you mentioned, in so the Islam the revolution was in 1979. So fertility rate was 6.4, right? Damn. And now the, the fertility rate just dropped all the way down to 2.146, which means that it's almost at uh, the replacement rate. This is like really low. The replacement rate is 2.1. Like this is something that you can, like it's going to be devastating for Iran because of uh, you know it, it, you can't you're like at, one thing at least that these countries have going for them is a young population that could be used as a working force for the future, right? You know what I mean? Like if you look at other poor countries, they would be like, oh my God, everything is bad. But hey, we have this capital to tap into. We have this young generation of red people who are ready. Like as soon as anything work, it ends up being better, we have like a labor force to tap into right away. And, you know, they, they will be able to, work and pay taxes and it's going to work out like there's a hope there's hope but iran doesn't even is even losing even that which is horrible however the solution is not to <laughs> the solution is to is not to remove condoms okay obviously um i do want to respond to some of the things that you mentioned um mm -hmm. for, oh, but before i mention that i do want to say that one thing iran um could be doing is to bring in actually no you know what they just have to fix the economy first before they do anything else like you can't bring in immigration when the issue is not yeah never mind i'm not gonna say that um i do when you mentioned that this is like more of an economic thing rather than a religious thing is that what you said i do want to mention um that it is actually I, well this is just the latest in many 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 efforts to increase the birth rate in iran they yeah, use this has a, religion towards this end, but I do not think that this is like, oh, condoms, that's against God's will. Like, they might paint actually, it as that. I don't think that's the actual motivator. Actually, um, you know, like, this, you know, you could, it would make a little bit more sense for us to, like, at least sympathize somewhat with the officials. Um if they if their if some of their talk if, if a lot of their motivation seem to be economical like like i just mentioned okay like 
hey, this is going to be bad for our economy. Okay. And therefore we need a better, we need like a bit more, uh, grow our young age. We can like, we can't let this happen. We have to go above the replacement rate and all of that, but it's not coming from the very high up all the way to Khamenei himself. This is about increasing the size of the Ummah. This is about, this is about create increasing a Muslim community, the Shia community. The main argument, the mm. main, main arguments they have for why we need to increase birth rate is that the Sunnis are actually in Iran actually do have high birth rates. And they see that as a danger. So if they were only worrying about birth uh, population and this was not about religion, they would be they would see that as a positive. Or like, hey, look, the Sunnis are the Sunnis in Iran are contributing. To, like they're having babies, that's fantastic. Like they're contributing at least somewhat to um, to you know going getting us higher fertility rates. But they're like, no, this is this is dangerous. We need to get the Shias to s- step up because if we if we keep going in this direction, the Sunni percentage of Iran is going to dramatically increase. If the Shias are not having babies and the Sunnis are having babies, that's a red flag for them, right? And Khamenei, every time we talk about um, low birth rates uh, from Khamenei, like this is about like the Muslim community, growing the number of Islams, creating soldiers in his army. Okay? So this is not about helping the economy. This is all religious mumbo jumbo. And also you also see um, a lot of mullahs in Iran telling you that this is a religious duty for you to have babies kids right and a lot of people are saying that we can't have babies we're suffering we don't have we can't even afford our own food and he's like you have and you know what the response to that is is Allah will provide no no you have to it's good that to suffer it's not like it's going to become easier this is a cost you have to pay for the mission for the greater good like it's okay to suffer in fact suffering means that you suffering is a good thing because you, you're sin, if you suffer in this world you suffer less in the next world and tr- and they say like trust me you would rather suffer in this world okay you'd rather oh suffer in this world because suffering in the next world means you will burn okay so go through the suffering i know you're poor i know you can't afford anything afford anything but have seven kids because it's a religious duty and then you have these mullahs and come brag about it they're like look I'm on kit number 12 and I'm not going to stop. Okay. And they brag about it. And like, but, and then the people that are listening to him, like, but, but you're rich. We pay, everybody has to pay like the, the mullahs. A lot of them are rich. They're like you're rich. You can afford it. It's like, it, that doesn't matter. It's a religious duty. Have 12 kids. Anyways, it's insane. So that's, a, that's a really good point because correct me if I'm wrong, but the Sunni population in Iran is much more, religious than the quote-unquote shia population in iran which is basically (laughs) the islamic republic of iran has obliterated its own shia believers within the country like everyone they 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 don't like it but the the sunnis actually do have more of an embodied faith yes well i mean the um yeah and the Actually, uh, actually, I'm going to go back to this comment later, but um, um, they see the Sunni, uh, a lot of the, the regime sees Sunnis as this, I don't know, insurgent, like this fifth column. I don't know, like they see, like you could be a, you could be Sunni, okay, and be born in Iran and have never left Iran and your entire family has been born in Iran and have always lived in Iran and never known anything about Iran but you are an agent of the enemy within Iran <laughs> because you're Sunni. Like you are, you are technically, you could be used uh, because you're Sunni. The government will always look at you as potentially some um, Saudi Arabian agent <laughs> that, mm-hmm. could, that will one day Wait. be tapped into as, as, as a force against the regime. Um, if yeah, go on. if you're Sunni, do you still have to do conscription in Iran, or are you exempt from conscription? Wait, 
I don't know about that, but let me actually somebody okay. um, ask us. Hey, like, I want, I'm gonna make sure I respond to this because somebody is offering us support. Uh, Dinesh is saying, "Hey, Armin, how I can how can I help you? I mean, donate money. You get, uh, well, you could help us by helping yourself to our blasphemous art. Um, it's wor um, if you support us on Patreon, you get access to our gorgeous, gorgeous nude, not safe for work blasphemous art, and also my book for free." So yeah, go to our Patreon uh, link in the description, or just search for Atheist Republic on Patreon, and you should be able to find that and support us. Thank you for considering that. Uh, and yeah, or if you I... just want to make a one-time donation, uh, you, you, we have the information for our PayPal in the description. That too. That too. Thank you very much. Um, also, here is another thing. Um, Meg Megu Min is saying, I agree with Armin. Jap Japan has a severe problem with this matter. Now they're welcoming Filipinos. Who have a high fertility rate and almost three kids per woman? Yeah, see, Japan is amazing because Japan, which is the country that the far right nationalists keep using as an example for why you need to be an ethno nationalist, because how could ethno nationalism um, be yeah, bad? Yeah, the beauty of monoculturalism. How, how how could ethno nationalism be b bad? But Japan is so, is so great. Okay, well, what they don't tell you is that Japan is great, uh, has become so great not because of its uh, homogeneity but the, in spite of it. And also Japan has been realizing that they need to ease up on their strict immigration rules because they desperately need immigrants. So I'm, Japan So Japan is maturing out of that mindset to close its borders to everybody that is not Japanese to work there. Like they're like loosening it more and more. So it's, yeah, let's keep looking at Japan, I guess, like, like and see what happens, right? So these ethno-nationalists just... Yeah, they just don't understand what they're using as an example. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm saying why they don't welcome Iranians. I mean, well, Filipinos are right by there, and uh, actually, Filipinos are uh, really good for um, as immigrants because Filipinos are really experts at the healthcare in within the healthcare industry, right? True. And if if you're having problem with an Come aging to California, population, you'll know all about that. <laughs> Yeah, if you're having problems with an aging population, you would want to probably get uh, immigrants from a country that is specifically good at healthcare. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.